<laughs> so this is a Fabian therapy. She's going to run away, is she? That's because she's had it. So this is the Fabian therapy put together. They're going to get the try, okay? So pretty simple. Plugs into the wall, oxygen here, and into the down there into the electricity. There's no power switch or anything back there. You just turn it on. You push in the green button. Okay. You can pull it on. It is battery operated, so you can have up to uh, three hours of battery life. Okay. And um, so we'll go through these buttons here. This is your, it's on power, right? So if I actually turn it on and unplug it, you'll see that it'll move over to this one here and it'll be a yellow light. And then uh, if it gets too low, it'll turn red or flash red or something like that. Um, and this one over here is an alarm button or a thing that'll light up. Um, but you also get an alarm bar up here, okay? And I think this is the primary alarm thing. So, um, so these menus here. This one here is actually going to be able to get into your alarm menu to actually set alarms. So if you want to adjust the alarm, hit that button, it'll take you there. That is your alarm silent. That is the nurse's mm -hmm. favorite button, right? Oh, I might want to do that there. But anyway. <laughs> okay. Here is your oxygen flush. Here is your manual breath. So if you want to give them a, a little bigger breath, do a recruitment or something like that, you can. Um, this is just to dim the, or dim the screen and brighten the screen normally. Now you see there's actually four little arrows in here because the one other thing they'll do is when you're actually looking at your waveforms as they're going across here, you can change the scale on that if you have it set up correctly. So inside in the setup menu, I can actually set it up so that auto scale or I can set up those manual. So if it's manual, what I'll do is I'll touch the I'll touch the waveforms and I should get a little cross will show up there. If you want to give them a, a little bigger breath, do a recruitment or something like that, you can. Um, this is just to dim the or dim the screen and brighten the screen normally. Now you see there's actually four little arrows in here, because the one other thing they'll do is when you're actually looking at your waveforms as they're going across here, you can change the scale on that if you have it set up correctly. So inside in the setup menu, I can actually set it up so that auto scale or I can set up those manual. So if it's manual, what I'll do is I'll touch the I'll touch the waveforms and I should get a little cross will show up there. And then I can go like this and I can change my suite to can make it, you know, narrower or wider. And I can also scale it, you know, so I can get a little better look at those waveforms. And then I can go in and even freeze the waveforms and look on it. So all that waveform evaluation, right? Um, and I already mentioned the oxygen flush, right? And the oxygen flush is adjustable, so it's not 100%, it's whatever you set it at. So if you're given a 23% and you want to set your oxygen flush at 30% at 28 or something, you can go in and do that. Um, these buttons here correlate to, like, there's going to be a little gray bar that shows up here. In that gray bar, you'll quite often have, like, some feature that's accessible. Like in our main, at our home menu or whatever, it's going to have the different modes, right? So these three modes you have, it'll do CPAP, it'll do like your, what they call dual top or bi-level or fly top or whatever you want to call it, right? But you're basically you got the two levels. Uh, you know, or it'll do just oxygen therapy. And you have to actually, you'll push it, it'll turn yellow, which will bring you to the screen. You can do any settings, changes you want. When you're happy with it, you push it again, and then it'll turn green, and that will be the one that's now venting. Until you push it the second time, you're not actually in there. So good. Okay. Um, these buttons here do your other functions, right? So this is going to, you know, actually turn it on. It'll put it in standby or turn it off. This is going to take you to your home menu. This one is going to be like just your your monitoring button. Mm -hmm. But it'll also get you into it. You can also, these will change. You can, that's where you actually freeze it or go in to look at your trends if you want to. And this button here is going to be all of your little sub menus so you can set it up or configure it or do whatever you want like that. Oh, and then this button, of course, is like everything else, right? Click, adjust, click, right? And this is touch screen too, so you can touch which feature you want to adjust. And so no real changes there from so many other events. Um, your circuits, you just you can use like a couple of different circuits. The one you guys are using is like the infant flow, so we have an infant flow circuit here. Um, that has to be configured. So actually, if you were using like, you could, there's a MediJet circuit you can use, and there's an infant flow LP circuit you can use. 
If you go for a different circuit, you actually have to go in and tell us you're using a different circuit. To turn it on, it's relatively quick. So you press the button. We timed it yesterday from the time I pushed the button to the time it was actually delivering a ventilation. It was 25 seconds, okay? When you turn it on, it's going to come on to whatever was set last, okay? Doesn't, you know, so, and it comes on. So if you don't want it, you have to start doing your settings or put it into standby or whatever you want. The nice thing is, is you're not going to have any alarms when it shows up. Okay, you automatically got two minutes of silence, okay? And that's because we don't want to turn it on, have it alarming while the baby's trying to rest, right? So, right now it's a nasal CPAP, so we're just going to actually, for the moment, we're going to put it into standby. So to put it into standby, I'm going to push this button, which you'll notice there'll be a bunch of dots show up here, some green ones and blue ones. So I want to hold it till the green ones disappear, and we're into the blue one. <coughs> now we're in standby. Where this gets really nice is when you have your heated circuit or your heated uh, chamber, pot, whatever, sitting there, um, you can turn that on while you're waiting for the baby, right? And uh, it'll have like four liters of continuous flow going through here. So you're not superheating the water down here. So when the baby's ready to go, you can turn it on. You don't have to worry about scorching them. Or you don't have to worry about a pot that hasn't been heated so now it's cold, right? And then you're going cold here until your fragile little baby. Cold for bad, we want it to strike. So I think that's a nice feature, okay? Now that we're in this, we can actually do, we can make any settings we want, right? So we can set it so, what would be in the most common setting you see for an able Six. Six? Eight? Or six and a half? Let's do seven then. What's the difference? And I can either push it like, like this again, or else I can push the button to do it, right? Yeah. And the set. And now, so blue means that too. Blue means the set. What about like if you're, do uh, you ever give like a recruitment breath or something like that where you want to give them a little bigger breath? No, not with that. Okay. But if we did. <laughs> but if you did, you could do this, right? So say if you want to do a recruitment breath and you want it set at maybe at 10 or 12, right? Not to 15. 15 is the maximum. Let's put it at 12. We put it at 12 and we can set it. Okay, so that's now if we want to give like a bigger breath, it's going to be a 12. Um, we can set our FIO2 to wherever we want, and we're good to go, right? Oh, we might want to change our oxygen flush. To change the oxygen flush, you have to push the button. It's set at 48 right now. So I push that button, and I can change it and dial it to whatever I want and set it, right? Because we don't want to give them unnecessarily 100% unless we're doing 95% just to keep them sided, right? 95% for yourself. Yeah. Oh, I could use it, yeah. Anyway, um, and to turn that oxygen flash off, I can push the button again or it'll time out, right? So remember I said there was all those like sub menus? Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you those sub menus and we'll come back here again, okay? So if we go into this, that just shows you where the oxygen calibration is. By the way, when it first fires up, let's go back to this whole menu. Well, it's already done its calibration. You won't get a, you know, there's your set is down here, right? That's where you set your oxygen. But up here is what's actually being delivered, where it's analyzed. So when you first turn it on, you won't get an analyzed number because it's going to be doing an oxygen calibration. And then it will continue to do an oxygen calibration every 24 hours. But you never have to actually take it off the baby. It doesn't change what you're getting the baby. It just takes the the O2 cell offline, calibrates it, and then puts it back on. So while it's doing the calibration, you don't get an analyze, but you still get oxygen at the set to your baby. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's because we don't want to disturb the baby to do an oxygen cow. We don't want to have to waste time while we're getting set up to go, right? Okay, so let's go into these submenus here like the drums. So initially we come to that screen, push it again. These are all those submenus. So if I go over here to my display, what I can do is I can change it, right? Like I can lock the screen. It's locked, right? Push any button to unlock it. I can set this one up. Now that's set up so it'll auto lock. And it'll auto lock, it says after 20 seconds. I don't want 20 seconds. I can, I can adjust this to wherever I want. 60 seconds or 30, whatever, right? Or I can touch it and do it again. And that's set. 
Now to get back to the other menu, I have to hit the return button, then that gray bar, so I gotta use these ones. And I go back there. Okay, right now it has it's gonna have solid waveforms that are solid filled in. If I don't if I just want, I can have them dotted. It's a dotted outline. I don't know why you'd want that, but you can do that. If I want, I can do it so it's auto set, so it'll auto scale or auto scaling, and it'll scale it. I kind of like to be able to adjust my own scale. So we'll go over there. So when I touch my screen, that's the little icon that's going to show up in the corner. Okay, so that's all that one. The other one that you're going to probably want to use is this one here. So the first thing to do is how long is it going to go? If you, if you get a low pressure, how long will it wait before it alarms? Okay, right now it's set for 5 seconds, but I can put that down to 1, and I can put it up to 10, right? It seems like a nice little number. You know, I can adjust the speed, right? Whatever you want. And again, it's a soft key to go back. Um, the next one down here, this is where you would change which circuit you're using. Got the instant flow, so no problem. That's set up correctly. Your oxygen flush time. When you push this, how long do you want it before it times out, right? I mean, you can turn it off manually, but, you know, maybe somebody is going to be not very good about turning it off manually. But maybe you only want 30 seconds, right? You can set it differently if you like. Um, over here in the oxygen calibration, it's set up for doing two point cal, which is probably the better way to go. And so I would leave it there. Um, down here, let's see. So this is uh, the maximum time for the manual breath. So when I hold this, Right now, it'll uh, you can hold it for a maximum of three seconds, and then it's going to drop the pressure back down, right? But maybe you want that a little bit higher, right? You can go quite a bit, up to 30 seconds, right? Let's let you have 10. You guys can change this up. Okay, and then the uh, then last one down here, there is a uh, unit to measure, so you can have it in millibars or centimeters, okay? We're in Canada, we'll say centimeters. <laughs> Now, this is actually kind of important. It's if you're in, and not because you need to know this, but somebody else might play with this. So what you could, there is another menu here. It's like that. So now I can push this button and I can reset it to the factory default. And if we want, we can program in the hospital default so you have your own custom Regina defaults, right? And then when you hit that, pop away it goes. But for now, it goes have to be programmed in. But the thing is, is that if you get out of this menu, and you go back, right, and you go back to this menu, and then you go like this, and you want to say, no, I don't want that, I want to do my setup, right? And I want to set up with ventilation things, you're like, well, where is that stuff all one sec? But you go down here, hit those two bars, right? That's where it is. So be careful that doesn't burn you, right? So you go look at that screen, and that's not the right screen. That's what those arrows say down there. Okay. Then there's other stuff that you're probably not going to be too interested in. There's patient data, which I really don't think you guys are going to be using in the near future. If you did, you should. It's not a big deal. I don't think when you turn the vent off, it'll delete those anyway, if I remember correctly. You have to double check the manual on that one. You can change the language. So say it in English, or as it says, American. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can um, change your date and time. It's already adjusted it for you guys. You can download information, trends, and alarms and stuff on the USB sticks, right? And it's just, you can see what the software version is, hours of use, blah, 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 right? Um, this one here is for if the biomids want to get in and play. And then, if I remember correctly, this one here is going to be so you can hook it up to your electronic medical records, right? So, pretty functional. So that's, that's this screen. And remember, when you first go here, it's probably going to show you the oxygen calibration. Just hit it again. Okay? This one over here is our home screen. It's the one that you're going to probably play with. But well, these are the two you're probably going to play with the most, right? So here is your normal setting. So we want to turn it on to nasal CPAP. Let's put this on. And I'll include it. Right now, we've got it set for 7 centimeters. So it's going to go, and we've got 7 centimeters, right? So baby's breathing along, set it seven centimeters, that's great. Baby opens the mouth and you get a leak. Our pressure drops, but what happens is that it bumps the flow up and brings it back up to seven, right? Which is pretty nice. This will compensate for up to 40% per leak. 
that's going to change. It's going to become 25%. Okay? And I think the issue there is if you have too much leak and too small a thing, we don't want it to completely compensate. The nice thing is, is that it would compensate as opposed to having an alarm let's go over and change them. So we don't, because then you're being called all the time or throwing, you know, chin straps and positioning the babies and touching them. It was that I heard this one thing that said, uh, they were checking how many times the baby was being disturbed in like one hour period. It was, I can't remember, it was like 300 lines or something ridiculous. Don't quote me on that number. I just remember it was something like a scene, right? And it's like, so we don't want to disturb them, right? You know, I'd be cranky. I wouldn't get better at that kind of disturbing stuff, right? You know, the pressure goes away. You know, you might get a bump of the pressure, but it'll bring it right back down. Now, whenever you change the pressure, it's automatically going to set your high pressure alarm for five centimeters above, right? So it's not going to high pressure if you got to set at seven until you get to like. 12, right? And two below, so five. That's it. That's kind of wide. So if you don't like it that wide, and I don't blame you if you don't, then I would go over here into the alarm thing, and I would change your high, right? Well, actually, it's only doing two above. Maybe it's in the bypass where it does five above. So, at any rate, so you can set it so it's like, you know, right there, or I can go auto and it'll set, or auto it'll set there. So it was actually a manual. So in auto, it'll set at 12. If I don't want 12, let's change it down to 8, 9, and away we go, right? So you can actually tighten those parameters up you want if you want. Or you can hit that parameter, and then you hit the auto set, and it'll auto set it, right? But if it's in auto, then when I go over and I make my adjustments, um, hang on here. It should, if I remember correctly, adjust automatically. So we go back over, yeah, and bump it back up again. But I can change that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That gives you some kind of some quick settings which you can play with. Now, if I put it tight, let's put it down to, uh, we're going to set a 10. Let's put it, or 9, so let's put it so it will alarm to give us about 10. And we'll let the pressure go down. Let it compensate. And let's go above, right? So we're going to get over. But it doesn't alarm, even though your pressure went up, and it doesn't dump or shut off either, right? Um, so what happens is that it's going to give itself at least five seconds to compensate and bring it within the alarm range. If it can't get it within the alarm settings in five seconds, then it will start alarming. Because just because the kid had one or two breaths where they're just a little higher pressure or something, we don't want to have everything freaking out and wake the kid up, right? Maybe he coughed or something or held his breath or pushed back or something. Not a big deal. But, you know, if it's more than five seconds and it hasn't been able to compensate, bring it into range, then we want to alarm and have you come over and just check to make sure nothing's on, nothing's wrong, okay? Make sense? Okay. We want, we can go back to the dual path, right? We're not actually in dual path. We're still in nasal CPAP. That's why... The nasal CPAP is green, this one's yellow. So this is just so I can set my settings. So, you know, you guys aren't using this here right now at the moment, is it? Right? Maybe now it's not locked. You hit the button, it'll unlock the screen. If an alarm goes off, it'll unlock the screen, okay? Screen. So let's just do like a, we'll do four, a high pressure of eight, okay? And then, let's do it. Put the rate that our inspiratory times at 0.4, does that sound reasonable? And the respiratory rate, we'll go high with the 60. And then we'll hit the dual path and away we go, right? Now, if I don't like the screen and want to change it, there's my little thing, see I touched it. So now I can use this and I can scale my screen. That's as high as I can scale, so it's limited to scale. I right, go down there, that's the limit, right? And I can change my sweep. So I'm getting the curves I want. If I want to freeze the curve, I can go into my monitoring mode and I can hit freeze. So now I can study those curves and make my analytical decisions, right? <laughs> okay, or I can unfreeze it. Or I can even go into trends and I can take a look and it'll show me different trends there, okay? And I can scale these two, right? 
Make sense? Mm -hmm. There's mud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So you go back over here. Yeah, so you want to give that manual breath. And you can let go, right? The oxygen flush. To change the oxygen flush, you have to push the oxygen flush. Actually turn it on, and then you can adjust that down, right? And turn it off if you want. Are there any questions yet? This all looking relatively simple. I mean, it's mm -hmm. a lot of different little functions, but none of them are really mm -hmm. hard. It's pretty intuitive. There's only a few things, you know, that didn't actually jump out at me when I was showing it first time. So, a few things in here. I have to read the manual. So, I've left the manual for you, okay? It's a better source than I am. Just I know how everybody loves to read manuals, so it's a good idea mm -hmm. for it to come by anyway, right? Now, if I want to turn it into standby, because we're taking the baby off for a little while, again, just push the button. We're in standby. If I want to turn it off, I have to turn it back on and then off, right? So hit this on and then hit, and I want to let all those ones go away. When you're shutting down, you'll get some alarming. What you do is you push the silent and hold that for three seconds. Go and we're on. Question. Yeah. 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 Get it on or start playing with it, right? Yeah. If you're doing high flow oxygen, then it's just a matter of like yeah, and you can disconnect it here, you put a little mm -hmm. adapter on, throw yeah. your cannula on, Scott says that's already what you do anyway. Mm -hmm. And away you go, right? So. Um I can say you can put an oxygen filter in there. Got under there. Oh, right. I was going to unplug this. So see, like, oh no, I actually haven't got it on. Hit the on. Now I'll unplug it, right? And it changes to yellow. Right? And there we are. Right. When I plug it in, it's green. Solid green means that it's fully charged or close to it. If it's flashing green, then it's charging. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, oh. What was I going to show you again? Volume. Volume. Volume, yeah. volume, right. It has three levels. There's low, medium, and high. And the way you tell is that there's a little bell there, right? So when you go into the alarms, you'll see a little bell on the side. So well, this is uh, that's on its lowest level. So because there's only one there's only one set of brackets around, right? I hit it again. Mm. That's it. And if I hit it again, that's it, right? So you got three levels for the alarm. Let's shut it off now again. The other thing it'll do is that when it's alarming, is that if it's a low level alarm, it's like a solid yellow and you'll get like one beep mm -hmm. every few seconds. I can't remember how often it is. And then if it's a medium alarm, it'll have a yellow flashing bar, okay? And you'll get like two or three beeps every few seconds. And if it's a high priority alarm, it's like a red flashing, and it's like five or six minutes, like like a set of three, then two, then one, and then I'll pause and start over again, or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So it um, tries to make it so you can tell how urgent it is. Mm -hmm. So if you're working at the other baby and see the occasional beep, you're like, ah, I'll take care of this one first. It starts like a, but it's all sorts of freaking out beeping going on. <laughs> Whoops, I'm better go over and check, you know? We got a disconnect or something going on. Yeah.